And oh, like you never told a lie? That's right, I've never told a lie. Well, just once, when I snuck out of class to go to the movies. It's not much of a lie. That's what I thought. Turned out to be the day they taught everything. <laughs> the final piece of the puzzle. My high school graduation. I was valedictorian. You were uh, valedictorian? Yes. I was fourth out of 19 graduating seniors. <laughs> anyway, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, Rose, if you were fourth, how were you chosen valedictorian? The same way every high school chooses the valedictorian. We drew straws. <laughs> and you picked the biggest one? I don't like to brag. <laughs> anyway, the topic of my speech was there's a big world out there, but you have to change buses in Tyler's Landing if you want to see it. <laughs> well, graduation day came and everybody was there. The mayor was there, his wife, old Johansson, young Johansson, big and little Gustav, the Stringmeyer twins, fat Jerry. Will, will you get to the point, Rose? The point is, I choked, wimped out, froze on the spot. Since that day, I have never been able to speak in front of a crowd. I say next time we try and outrun her. <laughs> Maybe she's just one of those people who needs to be shown some kindness. Like a fellow I knew back home, Ernest T. Minky. I'm suddenly so hungry, I think I'll get something. <laughs> Boy, that was a close call. If I had to listen to one more story about the colorful people from St. Olaf, I think I'll explode. Ernest T. Minky was St. Olaf's librarian. Kaboom. <laughs> he was also our town's only dentist. He had his office right in the library where he could do both jobs at the same time. But everyone hated Minky. Well, he seemed to take great pleasure in giving other people pain. They hated him so much that nobody ever went to the dentist or the library. <laughs> In 1938, you could tell if someone was from St. Olaf. They were illiterate and they had teeth that looked like Indian corn. <laughs> Thank you, Rose. That was a wonderful story. I'm only half done. I passed a kidney stone once that was less painful than this. <laughs> One summer, I worked up enough nerve to check out the latest Nancy Drew mystery, and Mr. Minky was stamping my book, and his tie caught in the stamping machine. He'd have choked to death if I hadn't cut his tie with my Girl Scout knife. Well, he was so overwhelmed with gratitude, he let me check my book out for a whole week. What's so special about that? Oh, usually he'd only let you check a book out for an hour. Mr. Minky always said books belong in a library. Really, Rose? I always thought Churchill said that at Yalta. But the point is, some people you think are mean might just need a little kindness. And some people, like old lady Claxton, are just plain rotten. Everybody, you will never guess what I did today. What? I was in this parking garage, and I, I had to go to the dentist because I lost my crown in a nectarine yesterday, and there was no parking on the street. There I was, all alone. I heard footsteps. Oh. It was my nightmare come true. Someone was after me. Uh, I ran. He ran. Oh. I ran faster. He ran no. faster. Oh. He grabbed my arm, and I turned around and dropped him. Need him right in his safe deposit box. <laughs> dropped him like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> he lay on the ground, and he was writhing and groaning and screaming in agony. And I stood over him, and I looked at this pitiable creature, and I thought, I can take care of myself. I'm not helpless. I'm going to be okay. Oh, honey. Honey, that That's is fantastic. Wonderful. I have faith again. Oh. Kill the killers. <laughs> this calls for champagne. I'll get it. Oh, no, honey, there's none on ice. Well, I'll put some in the freezer. Be ready in 20 minutes. Oh, so what happens now? I guess you press charges, right? I, well, no, no, actually not. He might press charges, though. <laughs> Why? You see, the guy that was moaning and screaming and groaning in agony was the parking attendant. He was coming after me because I forgot to pick up my keys. Please, Blanche, please. I'm too scared to go back to my room. This kind of thing has always frightened me, ever since I was a little girl, when I first heard my parents whispering about the St. Olaf Slasher. Slasher? Yes. Oh, he terrorized St. Olaf for months. In the dark of night, he'd sneak into an unsuspecting farmer's field and mercilessly slash his scarecrow to shreds. He was a scarecrow slasher? Primarily, although he was suspected in the disfigurement of several whisk rooms. <laughs> oh.
staying up like this playing games reminds me of my teenage slumber parties. Oh, God. Oh, I'll never forget my first slumber party. We all got sent home for fighting over who had the cutest date for the prom. <laughs> I never got to go to the prom. You're kidding. Why? Well, I really wanted to go with Delbert Twitchell. He was the most gorgeous boy at our school. And he was captain of the Precision Combine Drill Team. <laughs> I was so sure Delbert was going to ask me that I turned down our only foreign exchange student, Cyril Mountbatten. Well, Daddy didn't like Cyril anyway, because he was British. Daddy said the relationship would never work out on account of the language barrier. Daddy was a very caring and ignorant man. Well, finally, it got to the day before the prom, and Delbert still hadn't asked me. So I marched across a crowded cafeteria, stared him straight in the eye, and said, Delbert, what gives? He said, Jenny McCoy, that's why I'm taking her to the prom. And there was no change in her mind. Well, it might not be so bad. In fact, just last week, I was reading that you can buy the sperm of Nobel Prize winners. <laughs> Or was it Star Search winners? <laughs> Bye. Well, sperm used to be free. It was all over the place. <laughs> On the farm, a lot of the animals got artificially inseminated. Once, Harry the Bull went through a whole spring unaroused. And the cows and my father were out of their minds with grief. I mean, you haven't seen anything till you've seen a frustrated cow. <laughs> they can get this crazed look in their eye, and you know they're thinking, where's mine? Where's mine? <laughs> Cows have feelings, too. Anyway, when Harry really got lazy, Dad had to bring in Mr. Hoffenheisen to spread the seed. He did it in the most unusual way. He'd put on this really long rubber glove. What are you guys doing up? We're conducting a seance to contact Liberace. <laughs> we couldn't sleep. Why else would we be up at 4 a.m.? I couldn't sleep either. But I think it was something I ate before bed. What did you eat? Nothing out of the ordinary. A handful of snow caps, a couple of devil dogs, some Oreos. Oh, yeah, and a ho-ho chopped up in a bowl of fruit cocktail with heavy syrup. Couldn't sleep? I'm surprised you didn't try to kill the mayor of San Francisco. Midge, this has to be the biggest disappointment of my life. Yes. Yeah, and I've known some real disappointment, too, believe me. Rose, you're not going to tell us that story about the exploding pig again, are you? I never told you a story about an exploding pig, Dorothy. It was a peg-legged pig. Our possum was the one that exploded. Forgive me, Rose. There have been so many possum explosions lately, it's hard to keep track. So what was this great disappointment in your life, Rose? Butter. I wanted to be Butter Queen. Oh, yeah. What an actress. She was so good and gone with the wind. <laughs> I wanted to be Miss Olivia de Havilland myself. Blanche, are you listening to this? Bits and pieces. Go on. Well, Butter Queen was our town's highest honor. From the time I was born, my folks groomed me for it. Singing lessons, dancing lessons, junior butter pageants. For 16 years, my entire life revolved around butter. You were very fortunate. So many of us wasted our youth. When the time came for the pageant, I was incredible. I showed poise in the evening gown competition. I was brilliant in the oral butter quiz. They couldn't even trip me up with a trick margarine question. That evening, butter was spelled R-O-S-E. Rose, you're embarrassing yourself. Please don't go on. I have to, Dorothy. I've kept these bitter butter memories too long. As the pageant drew to its frenzied finale, there I was, alongside the other two finalists, churning my guts out. But all of a sudden, for no apparent reason, my churn jammed. Yes! And just like that, it was over. I'd lost. It was the biggest disappointment in my life. It was small consolation to find out years later there had been churn tampering involved. 
Blanche. Rose, Blanche and I are going to the other end of the cell. Don't cross this line. 